Have you just started 3D printing or you've been doing it for a while but just want to find the best settings to tweak and make your prints the cleanest as possible? Well, this video for is for you. I'll be going over the latest as of recording Cura and showing all my settings. What is up you guys? My name is Anton. I do content on all things 3D printing. And if you enjoy 3D printing content or just love watching cool models be created, hit the sub button down below. You won't regret it. If this video helps me you out, smash the thumbs up button. That helps me out. I greatly appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, Cura, as of recording, we're on version 4.7.1. Be sure you're on the latest version. There is no negative effects to having the latest version, only benefits. They're optimizing this and getting it better as the days go by and they find all the bugs and better ways to create prints. So be 4.7.1. Now, what I'm gonna do is go through every one of these sections right here and show you guys my settings, but hold on, too long to read. Listen, just hear me out. I'm not trying to get just watch hours for this video. You wanna watch this whole video thoroughly because just getting the settings is not gonna fix all your issues. I'm gonna be talking about certain specific things because you know what? You see this model up right here. That's like, a, I think it's part from an IG-11 model that I'm making right now from Star Wars. The models can be very different. All shapes and sizes and different settings are needed for every model. So I'm gonna be giving you guys general suggestions and ideas on how to approach when you're slicing each model, okay? Just applying these settings is not gonna work for a model, I promise you. You wanna watch it through. So, quality, let's go through that. I don't really change anything with mine. I go with stock settings. Just about most of the stuff in this video is gonna be stock settings with a few multiple steps that I changed that have given me better prints, especially in the latest version. Now I print with a six millimeter nozzle, 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So this is adjusted to that. If you are on a 0.4, it'll be a little bit different. Keep in mind when you do, I will have a demo link for the profile, but I'm telling you, please be very careful with it because it, as you see, this this is for a CR10S Pro version two model, okay? If you don't have the exact model, if you have different things like your hardware, any sort of way is different, this is not gonna work the same way. These are general guidelines, but just make sure your quality is set up by the full stock settings for whatever nozzle you're printing with, okay? Nothing crazy here. Shell, by the way, before I go crazy into this tutorial, if you're not seeing some of these parts, you can go through your settings in Cura and make sure you unhide them, okay? I'm not gonna be bogging this video down with that, but just make sure that's how you can do it. You can search the settings for whatever I'm talking about if you don't see it either. Now, uh, wall thickness, I don't really change much here, okay? This is all stock settings. Um, going through it, I haven't changed much except for this is a big one, and I believe I mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again, ZC alignment, do sharpest corner. Uh, what that is, is, how do I best explain it? It's when the nozzle moves and it ends, there is a Z seam, okay? And uh, basically, the effect is, is you'll have small little dots, either on the outside or on the inside of your prints. And that's just how it is with this kind of 3D printing. However, you can get those dots to kind of align if they're all, as I have set here, on the sharpest corner. So it's on the sharpest wall or side of that layer that you're on and you can just easily sand down that line boom and it'd be gone okay now also do the seam uh, corner preference smart hiding um that may be a default setting i'm not sure so there's nothing really crazy else going on in shell infill okay let's talk about infill this one uh, i see people ask me quite often what pattern do i use gyroid i love gyroid i have used multiple different patterns the reason i love gyroid is not only is it structurally sound it also gets all the spaces that I need when it's printed. What do I mean by that? Okay, so let's say I have, uh, you know, this model, you see that red line right here. This model's sticking out, it's protruding on that side of it there. Now, if I have a type of infill pattern that's not gyroid, uh, let's say it's like triangles or some sort of lines, it's possible that when they go up all the way to these that are here, when it's gonna be covering that part, there will be nothing for it to stick to. Okay, it won't be perfect. Let me show you guys in the preview tab what I mean. So once we go to layers here, okay, this is what you wanna watch out when you go with really low infill settings too. So again, you, you don't need custom supports for this right here. It's not going to support inside of the model. Supports go on the outside of the model, so you see the blue here. But these lines right here, they're going on top of something. If they're not on top of something, 
they're gonna fail, right? You see I have that gyroid pattern and it is supporting those lines enough all around the model. However, let's say I had lines or triangles. Well, maybe it would be too big of a gap between those lines and they'll kind of sink and you have this model that look a little bit deformed on the top right here. Um, hopefully that gives you an explanation. By the way, another neat little trick and tool. Uh, if you drag uh, on the side to go up and down off the layers, what you can do if you want to be very finite, and it's a little bit cut off my screen, is you click on that circle and you use your arrow keys and you go layer by layer. Very, very useful. Anyways, back to our qualities. So infill, I also go pretty much 5% on most uh, cosplay and prop pieces. Uh, you don't need to be high. I, God, and if you haven't watched my video on lowering your filament use, that's a big part of it, okay? Go check it out, it's helpful. Some people have enjoyed it, but 5% idle density, I've done as much as 0%. I have done hollow prints. Now, you, it does not work for every model, I promise you, it does not. You gotta watch out for it, but you can go very low. There's no reason for you to go higher than 5% for the most part. Um, unless you're doing something that needs to be structurally sound, and at that point, you shouldn't be printing with PLA at all, uh, but something stronger. Um, I'm going through this, and I don't believe I have changed any other settings. Um, these can be tweaked if you would prefer for yourself, but I just haven't had any need. I've been okay with it, though. Going on the material. Obviously, this one is going to change for every single one of you guys. Uh, look at the box. Your box is going to give you temperatures. I tend to have noticed that the lower I go to the end that they recommend, so if they say a range of 200 to 230 Celsius, I go to 200. The lowest I can to where it's still melting seems to be better and smoother quality. Uh, this is at 205 is the current PLA I'm using. Now when we get to a build plate uh, temperature, not all of you guys may have a build plate that uh, gets hot. Uh, if you do, great, good for you. You don't need it as hot as I have mine. Mine is 70 degrees because I use what's called a wham bam. Uh, and it will not stick in it here if it is below 70 degrees. If you do use a wave amp, please use 70 degrees. Your stuff won't stick and it'll fall over like I mentioned. Other than that, there is quite literally nothing else that you need to change or mess around with the material. Speed. Okay, this one, when I started first printing, I thought you couldn't mess around with as much as I have. Uh, I think it starts at 45 in stock, if I'm not mistaken, maybe higher. Uh, I usually go 55 millimeters per second. Works for just about everything for me. You can push, I've pushed above, I think 75 and it worked. Now, these are very suggestive uh, numbers because a lot of things can change. Your printer model, it may be different. Your nozzle size, it'll be different. What material you're using, the model you're printing, this is all very suggestive. But what I'm telling you is test it out. Test it out, bring your printer, push it to the maximum one print. Be like, okay, you know what? If it fails, I'll be okay with it. And let me put 75, 85 millimeters in. See what happens, okay? You'd be surprised with how fast you can push your prints. And it really gives a serious effect by the end result, especially on bigger models like this. Moving on. Travel speed, any of that, I have not changed really. Uh, I do usually use enabled jerk control. Uh, I do have it usually selected. I have found it to be better. Sometimes you might tweak it, but this just in general does a good job making sure, uh, well, what it says, enable your control. By the way, if you hover over what it does, it'll tell you that it explains, like this one is the print head and changing the velocity on X, Y axis changes, increase the jerk and reduce printing time and cost quality. So you want to make sure it's kind of controlled and leveled out there. But if you don't know what something means, like print jerk, does that mean your printer is a jerk? No, it doesn't. So if you just hold your cursor over it, hover around, it gives you an explanation. Very helpful when you're trying to learn these settings. Nothing else really in speed. Travel, I do have retraction enabled and I have a retraction labeled at layer change. What it does is it retracts your filament and every time there's a new layer, it gives you a little bit cleaner prints in my experience. Now, I'm telling you guys what has helped me this may not be the perfect solution for you, okay? These are suggestions. They probably will work, I would assume, but you need to try them out and mess them around. I'm basically hitting the ones that you do want to mess around with. Anything else that I don't mention, keep it stuck. I, I don't see a reason, unless if you're really trying to address a certain issue, it should be fine. This is a big one right here. Uh, cone mode, I have it all. This makes your prints so much smoother. At least for me, it has been 
absolutely phenomenal. I love this mode right here. Strong recommend it. Um, I do have Z-Hop when retracted. That's about it really for our travel. Cooling, I keep a stock, nothing crazy there. Supports, okay, this, this is gonna be the lengthiest part of the tutorial. <sighs> Supports are probably the biggest part when you're slicing things because they affect your quality, your success, uh, the amount of filament you're using, just everything. It is the longest time you'll spend during your slicing times. Now, messing around with support here may not be the most effective way of messing around with your model here. Keep in mind, your printer head goes left to right, okay, on that axis. So you want orient. So you see I have these uh, parts sticking out right here on the model. I'd rather they be left to right because that's where the printer head would be going, right? If there was forward, it would just kind of do one side and then have to move the printer head, go on the other side. Not as quick. Uh, worse quality. But supports, you have to have the perfect angle. You know, I have supports going around here and I find it vertically. You always want to go vertical for highest quality, um, but sometimes I'm going to use more filament, but that's okay. We want successful and clean prints. 70 degrees is as far as I can push my specific printer model. If you're going to ask what specific printer model I use, I mentioned it many, many, many times. It's all over my channel. Creality CR 10S Pro version 2. Okay. You can push though, whatever printer you have pretty far on the overhang angle. I usually don't go above 70, but 70 is really good. Note, okay, if you have something going on like triangles or something that's kind of pointed on the bottom here, lower your support overhangs to like 30 to 40 degrees so that it does support right there. And then use support blockers for the rest of your model. Very, very useful. By the way, your support blockers, when you throw them on there, all right, so it's just a box, you can do all sorts of things. You can't just move it around just like a normal model. You can scale it, you can resize it. I can remove new uniform scale. I can make it all sorts of different shapes and do whatever I want. Very, very useful wherever you got very specific models and you want to turn it supports on the bottom, not the top or somewhere else. 70 degrees, um, the, 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 I don't really, I support density is a difficult one for me. I'm still trying to discover it. Surprisingly, I actually did 0% on support densities and that's worked for my previous models. I don't know how. Um, it does sometimes work on your models with 0%, but uh, technically you want to have some density to it. So keep it on the low end. Uh, what the density is, is basically when you're printing a wall, it needs something inside of the wall if the wall ever becomes a kind of a roof shape, right? And if you have more of a dense one, it's good because it will have something to lay the layer on. If it doesn't, you're going to have an issue. So um, let me actually show you guys in preview what I'm talking about here. While that slices, I don't believe there's any other settings that I really mess around with. You can change these, but um, oh, okay, one I will mention, I've been messing with the support pattern. The reason being is I don't want to use a lot of of my filament on supports, but also I want the quality still be good and to be able to take off these supports. I have found mines to be the better ones recently. Um, again, that's suggestive, but that's just one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, support pattern is something along with the overhang angles that you want to mess with. Now the infill thing that I was telling you about, you see these lines going on right here? Okay, this is kind of the same concept I was telling you guys before where you want to make sure your model is not completely hollow. So right here is a perfect stage. You see this needs to be laying on something. Now it prints it mid-air. You see that? That's an issue right there. Because I have very little percent infill and there's nothing to lay on, it's probably going to fail over there. Now it goes over it multiple times. So there's a chance it will succeed. Um, but that's something you want to watch out for, especially when it's a lot larger. Now with this model being, uh, well, you know, I, I might want to change that. And there's different ways you can change it with different patterns, uh, along with, you know, how much space is between those. So keep in mind that is what I've been changing around. Now, the big thing with 4.7.1 that I have changed for myself is using tree supports. I have had better success with tree supports than in the previous versions of Cura. They've done a good job. It is now not an experimental mode, so that kind of tells you they, they tailored it to where it needs to be. But it does use more filament recently for me. 
So mess around with this. It sometimes it's better for your models and sometimes it's not. Um, but I will mention that's a big thing in 4.7.1. Tree supports have been gotten better. Now, we're almost done. Fung around me with for like 15 minutes. Build pay adhesion. I do a raft. I recommend rafts on everything. Yes, it uses more materials. No, you don't have to use it if you don't have a wham or anything like that. But you know what? You want a successful print, wraps are nice. Dual extrusion, I don't have that. There's no mesh fixes that I really mess around with. I just keep it stock. Special modes, I just keep it stock. Experimental, I have not experimented with experimental mode, okay? Uh, there may be some certain things you want to mess around with, but for me, I have not needed to go that dive deep. My prints have been clean and good enough for now. So there you go, guys. There's a very thorough and a long Cura tutorial. Hopefully with it, you're able to slice your prints better, get better qualities, and understand and learn how Cura works more better. Um, my name is Anton, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this, smash thumbs up, hit the sub button down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.